quiet on the set. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the political guy, Terrence Atkins, and I'm bringing you another video. Um, first, let me just thank everybody for subscribing and um, tuning in to watch and see what I have to say. Thank you. And if you are watching, hit the um, subscribe button, please hit that bell notification so you'll be the first person to know when my videos are uploaded. Um, I'm kind of sporadic right now. I've been doing a whole lot. I've had a busy summer working with the play, going out of town, about to go out of town again and do my sermon Sunday. So I've had a lot that I've been working with and working on this summer. So um, just hit that uh, subscription button, subscribe, do all that good stuff, share it, make sure the word gets out. I want everyone to hear so that we can be a better informed populace for this upcoming election cycle. So the um, title of this video is Living Single versus friends and the economic policy that separated them. So today I'm gonna to take two fictional shows and show you the expression of basically what I talked about last week through the GI Bill and the New Deal and how black people were locked out and how immigrant, immigrant class of people were able to come in and receive these benefits. Now. I do know that these are two fictional shows, but they have two very real tracks that they follow. And if you follow the storyline or if you watch either of the two shows, you will see that they, um, you know, six friends in New York. And it's it's an expression of wealth. It's an expression of what was given and gifted and what wasn't, you know, for another group of people. And <clears throat> it's, it's, it's very real. Because when you think about who wrote this show, Yvette Lee Bowser, a black woman, and the people that wrote Friends, you know, they, they come from two totally different backgrounds. So I wanted to juxtapose how they portray real life and show you that politics is real. Even, the, even in a fictional show, the politics that created life for, for specific groups of people is real. So first first off, I want to say that Friends is a complete ripoff from Living Single. Living Single came out in 1993, and at the time when I was watching, when I was doing my research, there's a video of Queen Latifah talking about Warren Littlefield, who was the CEO of NBC, or president, or you know whatever title they're using. But she said that, he was asked, you know, what show on TV would you like to have if it wasn't already a show? And he said, Living Single. And in another video, I was watching Maxine Shaw, Erica, Erica, whatever her name is. She, um, she said that they were going through the list of names and the list of names consisted of Living Single, Friends, and about eight other names. So the original name for the show could have been friends you know but they chose living single so like i said i'm gonna parallel these six characters and their lives and how policy affected this this show and how policy affected the people in the show <clears throat> So to start off with the character comparison, I did a couple of websites and, and as usual, those websites will be in the description box as usual. So just check them out if you, you know, fact check or if you, if you like either of these shows and you want to do some research and look at it for yourselves, you can. So they, um, on the websites that I, I, I saw, they're pretty much were the same with the com comparison of characters. Regine and Rachel, both fun and flirty, high fashion, all that type of stuff. In the pilot episode of Living Single, Regine was messing with the guy and he was married. Well, I don't know if he, they, you know, she was dating a guy and he ended up being married. And throughout the show, they, you know, talk about that. And in Friends, Rachel herself is running away from a marriage. She has on her wedding dress and she just took off and meets up with the friends at the Central Park. So it's the marriage kind of thing is synonymous in the pilot. So 
So they have Khadija and Monica as the two kind of headstrong characters. They're both considered the mother hens of the group. Most of the shows take place in their apartment, you know, so they kind of put those two together. And in Living Single, Khadija, she's a, a Howard grad, she's a basketball star, and she owns a magazine. And with Friends, Monica is seen as the very competitive one. She's always overly competitive in games and different things like that if you watch either of the, if you watch the show or if you haven't watched the show. So the next two that they compare are Max and Ross. And Max and Ross are both the more educated people in the group. They're both, well, Max is a lawyer and Ross has a PhD and he's an NYU professor. So they both are, you know, highly qualified people when it comes to academia. Kyle and Chandler are both the kind of executive smooth, suave guys, you know, Kyle is a stockbroker and in Friends, Chandler, he works in IT. So they kind of parallel each other because they're, you know, smooth guys with these kind of easy jobs where they're making a lot of money. Um, it talks about how, well, not exactly how much money they make, but it does say that they both make a pretty good amount of money. Overton and Joey Tribbiani, are the next two people that are paralleled and they're both kind of the goofy male character that you know the roommate kind of character and they make the jokes you know so if you if you watch the shows or if you if you get caught one episode of friends and you watch living single or the other way around you you kind of understand where i'm coming from so the sixth characters sixth set of characters phoebe and sinclair they're the both, both the female kind of goofy characters, off-center characters, just like Overton and Joey. Um, when it comes to Phoebe, I think that Phoebe is the only American lineaged character in Friends, because on the on the website Friends fandom, it goes through. On the Friends site, on the Friends fandom site, it goes through, you know, everybody's lineage on Friends. It goes through to to grandparents on some of them, and well, I think it goes to all of their grandparents on on the fandom site. So Phoebe has has kind of a rough life. She's a product of a birth that was outside of a marriage and. Her mother didn't want her, so she was adopted. And then her father left, and she was raised by her stepmom. So her stepmom committed suicide, and then she was only 14 at the time, her and her twin sister. They had to, you know, they both went on two different tracks, her and the twin sister. And Phoebe went kind of down a rough spiral. She robbed one of the characters in, in one episode. She, um, lived with a couple people she's she was homeless she lived with uh monica for a while so phoebe kind of had a rough life and i feel like she's the only american character <clears throat> because other characters are jewish american and italian american so i i, I feel kind of bad that when you look at friends and you see that there's all these immigrant Americans, you know, nothing against immigrants, but when you see them and you see that they they access things that we weren't able to, you know, it's just it's just kind of weird. So the one of the main things about friends and living single is the apartment situation. Um like I said earlier, most of the shows take place in either Khadija's apartment or Monica's apartment. And when you look at the living situations of living single, it's, it's a little bit different from the living situation in Friends. Uh, with the apartment situation, you got Khadija, Regine, and Sinclair all living in a, a Brooklyn brownstone. And I did estimations for the cost of that, um, like, base price for a brownstone is like 750k in the 90s so they had a three bedroom which was pretty nice upstairs downstairs 
I don't, I don't know if they're all upstairs downstairs or what but it looked pretty nice so i just valued it at a million a million dollars nice round number you know so they all live there they're all working working class people except for khadijah who owns flavor magazine but even with flavor magazine she has a lot of struggles providing for the magazine making sure that things are on top of it like even the when the copier went out she had to borrow two thousand dollars from max like there were there were several situations where she could have went under because she didn't have the safety net like the characters and friends so the second apartment is overton and kyle's apartment which Overton was the handyman, and he was the handyman for the building that he lived in, as well as the building next door from the research that I did. Um, pretty much all the research that I did from Living Single was watching the episodes and piecing together the IMDB and um, Wikipedia, pretty much, because there wasn't like a very, like a central Living Single history type of catalog like there is for friends with the friends fandom wiki site because like everything pretty much that i needed to know about the friends characters i got it from one site but with living single i had to watch episodes i had to um like and still it's still kind of incomplete because i i wanted to get this video out and i've been working on it for about a week and a half but i just i just kind of had to get this video out so overton and Overton and Kyle. Overton is the handyman. So anybody that knows anything about being a handyman or any working for an apartment building or something like that, most of the times they do subsidize your rent. You know, they, they'll say, well, you can live here for 50 percent or 75 percent off or whatever, because this is New York. So so prices may vary. So Kyle is a stockbroker, like I said, who's amassed a lot of wealth in the stock market. Well, who has amassed a lot of money in the stock market. Um, and they both live in the same apartment. And then you have Max, who lives across the street in her own apartment. With the friends living situation, Monica started out with that apartment by herself, which was her grandmother's apartment that her grandmother was still on the lease for. But her grandmother lived in Florida. And then Rachel moved in. Now that apartment is valued at $3.5 million in Greenwich, Greenwich Village. And like I said before, Monica is a chef and on the, this is all on the fandom website. They were saying that her income was about $78,000. So that was like, there's no way that she could have been paying this, but there is a way. So across the hall, there's Joey and Chandler and they, um, not a lot goes on at their apartment, but I pretty much value it at the same $3.5 million. Then you have Phoebe, who was homeless, who's lived with other people and, you know, just kind of bounced around until she was, you know, found her, her wealth. She lived with Monica as well, and then she was gifted an apartment by her adoptive, uh, adoptive grandmother. And then Ross had his own apartment. He had been married and had, well, they were about to start a family, you know, all the type of stuff. So they were, had a home, probably an apartment, nice little apartment in somewhere in New York because he was a professor at NYU. So somewhere around there, he had to get an apartment and be able to live. So now that I've broken down the two living situations, you can see how different it is for for both of these groups of people with the living single side they're paying rent rent they don't own the brownstone they probably ain't gonna never own the brownstone over ten and kyle paying rent probably not gonna own the brownstone max might eventually own her apartment but all of these are rental situations with monica that apartment is her grandmother's apartment so pretty much Monica, all Monica has to do is probably pay HOA fees, state tax, things of that nature. She's probably not even really paying rent because her grandmother lived there and it's, it's probably paid for. So to understand how that happens, you have to understand the policy that shaped the narrative. 
With Monica and Ross, they were sister and brother. They were born into, you know, a, a, a decent middle class family. They they were born to Jack and Judy Geller, and you know, I'm 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 kind of averaging everybody out at the same the same kind of three year bracket. Um, it says that Jack and Judy Geller are were born around 1949, so you know, 51, 47, somewhere in there they were they were born and they went on to do what they needed to do. Now these, like I said, these were Jewish Americans and probably second generation because their mother Althea came in 1915 and Althea was the original owner of the apartment and she gifted the apartment to Monica. And in one of the stories, it says that Ross, you know, kind of goes there for the summer and he was 14. So they were about 30. So that's 16 years at least that the grandmother had the apartment so you have to understand that she she probably paid for the apartment the apartment was probably paid for now jack jack geller was a u.s veteran which comes with a lot of things when you, in terms of the gi bill like if you if you watched the last video and you went through some of the articles go to the section where it says like the GI Bill and FHA loans and all that type of stuff. And it'll explain in, in more detail and in depth about how we were locked out of the New Deal and, and all that type of stuff. So we're going to say that Althea on the fandom website, it says she was born in 1915. And I'm pulling out of stops. You know, this, this is a fictional show, but I'm trying to, to, to get a point across that real, there's real, there's some realness in this art imitates life and with the writers writing this and them writing from these two different perspectives on how wealth was situated and they were both accurate depictions of how wealth were wealth was situated came to be so like i said jack and judy geller were monica and ross's parents jack was a u.s military veteran he went to war and he came back and he received the benefits from the GI Bill, which I'm not saying he shouldn't have, but I'm just saying we didn't. So with him receiving the GI Bill, he was able to send Monica and Ross to school for free. So Ross was able to become a doctor, even though uh, he was able to be to able to have a PhD, even though, you know, he's a smart guy anyway he he had didn't have the burden of student loan debt even though student loan debt isn't like it is now it was still around so with althea their grandmother she received benefits from the new deal she's possibly first generation she probably came in with the wave of um jewish immigrants that came from the persecution of the holocaust so she more than likely received benefits from the holocaust she also received money from the new deal you know, if she came over here and she was married, you know, there's two Holocaust survivors. Or if she was married, she married into whiteness and she married into wealth that was here. Even And more than likely, she didn't experience the Great Depression either. But she just came and received the benefit, received the benefits from it. So the, the next character that I parallel is Rachel Green. And she also on, on the fandom website, it says that she's a Jewish immigrant. This, this is not anti-Semitic at all. You know, it's, it's the truth. She is the daughter of Dr. Leonard Green, who's a ca cardiologist and Sandra Green, who was divorced from Leonard. And it seems like Sandra Green came from wealth as well because in, in one episode, she says, you know, I left I went from daddy's house to the sorority house to my husband's house, you know. And at that point in time, uh, it college was common, but it wasn't for everybody. Everybody wasn't going to college. So it's, it, it shows you that the, the wealth positionality in the field, in, in, in the spectrum of the Jewish community was totally different because we all know and have heard about how, you know, Jewish people only marry Jewish people. You know, even black people pretty much marry black people. Like, it, I mean, it's it's 
it's just the truth is just real. People mostly marry in, enter inside their race. So the, the wealth was just accumulating through the generations. So then you have Chandler Bing, which is Ross's college friend. And in, in some, some of the things it says they were friends in college, and some of them it says they grew up together, but I'm just gonna say that they did grow up together because their parents knew each other. And his parents were Nora and Charles, Charles Bing. <laughs> and Nora was an erotic novelist and she uh, wrote a lot of books and Charles B was a burlesque show. Well, he had a burlesque show in Las Vegas, which I'm pretty sure makes a decent amount of money. And then you have Joey, who is the Italian American and his parents are Joey Sr. and Gloria. And Joey owns a pipe fitting business. And then when, when, you, when you think about it, Joey Tribbiani Jr., the character in the show, he really doesn't have a steady job. He's worked at Central Park. He's, he's a, trying to become an actor. He, he got fired from a job. Like I think it was like season two he got fired from a job. So he has a lot of jobs in it. It says that on the fandom website, which is linked below. But his his family was able to receive benefits from the FHA. You know, when, you, when you're able to buy a home with a 20% down payment when it's normally 50%, you know, that, that kind of changes things. And then when you're able to buy a home in a neighborhood that appreciates in value, you can take out loans and you can fix your house and you can start a business or you can travel and, and fix your house or you can travel and buy new furniture or, you know, there's things that you can do when the cards are set up in your favor. Plain and simple. So the last character, Phoebe Buffay, like I said, I think she's the only American character and she had a rough life. And her dad was a pharmacist, like, and he just, just left them with, with the stepmom and she, like I said, the things that happened. But at the end, she ended up inheriting an apartment from her, her grandmother, her adoptive grandmother, and she also inherited a yellow taxi cab. So those two things can set you up very, very well when you live in New York because with the, with the way the government sets things up, Everybody can get a gold medallion. And if you have one, you can sell it. And you can sell it for like 600K. So back in that day, she could have probably sold it for like two, 300,000 and been straight. But she didn't, she kept it and she, she made a business out of it. And she lived in her free apartment from her grandmother. Now, like I said, I the living single side was totally totally different i couldn't just go to this one website and click and click and click and just get this information i had to watch episodes i had to kind of reference episodes i had to find mother's day episodes and father's day episodes and all that type of stuff to get this information just to be able to juxtapose these two situations with these friends growing living in new york now khadijah is a howard grad and more than likely, she went to school on a basketball scholarship. She she always calls herself MVP and Khadijah All Chains James. Like, that's, that's her signature. So, more than likely, she went to school on a basketball scholarship. And, you know, that was helpful to her parents, who were Rita, which was her actual mom. Um, her mom on the show was her actual mom in real life. And her dad, which I, I didn't write down his name, but... She came from a two, well, a semi two parent home. I, somewhere between the ages of five and 10, her dad left because her, her sister Tatiana Ali was about 10 years younger than her. And there was a picture in, in episodes that I was watching where he was singing the, the Get Well Tummy song to her and it was a picture in his wallet and she was five years old. So I know it's between five and 10. Then you have Max who went to Howard and Oh, let me come. Let me come back to Maxine Shaw and her family. So, we go to Regine. Regine, 
her mother's name is Laverne. Regine works at the boutique and she ends up, you know, doing fashion and styling for a TV show. So Regine's a hustler. Regine gets that bread. So her mother, her name is Laverne. I didn't hear anything about a dad. I, I didn't. I was looking for it. I was trying to find it. I didn't see anything about a dad. But Regine is in one episode, I think it was the pilot episode as well, Khadija says that she's one generation from the projects. So they're even saying that not like, not like it's bad or anything, <laughs> but even saying that they gave me a little bit more information on her background because we all, you know, one generation from, from a fallen down house, you know what I'm saying? From one or two generations from a house that didn't have no floors in it. So so i think she came from a single parent home but i'm not sure and even with kyle like i know his mom was alive and his mom lived around the corner i guess from um overton's parents they kind of grew up together in cleveland so i know that she was alive but i didn't hear anything about a dad or a name or anything like that as far as the show went so you have sinclair who has two parents she's she came from a two-parent home and um Clinton and Lila Jack Clinton and Lila are her parents and it doesn't really say what they do but they seem like you know people that benefited from affirmative action then oh so Max Max was a Howard grad, and more than likely, I feel like she was probably valedictorian of her school in Philly, or, you know, top 10 at least, and she probably received some type of scholarship for being, for being smart, and, you know, you have to keep a 3.0 GPA at least to obtain a, a JD, a law degree. So, you know, she's a, she's a pretty smart person, and her parents which it didn't give a father's name, but her mother, Nina Shaw, CCH Pounders. Her mother was an attorney as well. And, and I was watching and like most of this stuff came from the same episode, but I was watching the episode and she said that her mother was receiving a women's, women's legal fund lifetime achievement award. And that's how I found out that she was an attorney. And I was like, oh, okay. And then in that same episode, she said, well, I'm, I'm the underachieving child because they were asking her if her brother and her dad was coming. And she was like, no, nah, because my brother's receiving an uh, NAACP award and my dad is receiving an honorary doctorate from the University of Pennsylvania. So Max came from a kind of upper echelon type of background. She she was part of that you know one percent that she probably she probably is part of the one percent as far as this show goes because the one percent of black people um, because we we've expressed that white wealth and black wealth are two totally different things and you know I'm I might I'm trying I'm trying to start adding the 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 information up here somewhere but I I'll work on that so. I done, I done rambled on for a little bit, and I know y'all like, Terrence, what, 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 what is going on? What are you saying? What, well, what I'm trying to say is that the windows for success are very narrow for black people. Like, when you look at the generations, and, and they both parallel so well, like they both are lined up identically. When you look at living single, you got a group of black people that's living paycheck to paycheck, basically, except for Max and Kyle. Because they have good, stable jobs, and it says Max makes about $125 an hour. So Max is making some money. So you got Kyle and Max who are, who are, who are making a lot of money. And you have the rest of the black people that are just sustaining because even in episodes with with Khadijah being a black business owner and I can I commend her for that in the show like that like this show along with you know some of the other black shows sent a lot of people to college but Khadijah had Flavor magazine she employed about 15 black people and her cousin 
but she was always struggling to make make the the the, the magazine work. Like she was always she she was two thousand dollars short. She couldn't get it get her magazine printed. She uh, the copier went out. You know it was it was always something that she that showed you that she didn't have any generational wealth to stand on to make sure that her, her magazine was a success. But with Maxine, cause that's who she got the money from. Max had the money, Max had the bread. Max came from a family where her, her dad was an upper echelon type person. Her mother, her mother was an attorney. Like she, she doesn't come from the regular household situation of black people. And even with their parents, the baby, the baby boomer generation, the only reason that they succeeded and did what they did is because of affirmative action, because of that narrow window that we had where black people were able to get jobs, just just get a job. Like that was in the in the what 60s and 70s, 80s, a little bit, a little bit in the 90s, and then it kind of died out, you know, unionization kind of died out. So the jobs became worse. And then you go to her grandma because they talk about Grammy James. Grammy James more than likely came from sharecropping or she was a, a house person, a domestic. And those people were locked out of the social security benefits that they were needing. They didn't receive the social security unemployment rate, unemployment payments. Because like I like to say, the Union won the war, but the South won the country. Because when you look at the legislation, all the legislation was written to not upset Southern order. When you read when affirmative action was white, it tells you this was in the 1930s. Grammy James was probably a domestic who couldn't get you know the unemployment benefits that she needed from the Great Depression in New York. But you look at the Friends cast, and like I said, you know, it, it only speaks about one grandparent, but they all grew up in the same, four of them grew up in the same community. The other one was an Italian-American, and the other one was, was an American. And you, you, you can see that the Italian, the, the Jewish Americans were doing fairly well because the apartment that they were in was three times the cost of what Khadijah was paying. Probably Max, probably all of them, three times. She she could have paid for all of their apartments, all three of them. But she didn't have to. Her grandmother did. Generational wealth, like you, you're able to loan, you're able to get loans off your house when it appreciates in value. Because I'm pretty sure her grandmother didn't pay three point five million dollars for that apartment. When you see in Chicago that the black black housing market was undervalued by three to four billion dollars, that's generational wealth that we did not receive. When you see that their parents got through on the GI Bill, in one episode, the father was given was about to give Monica Monica his Porsche. I don't know if he did or didn't, because she was upset about the way that her mom was treating her. Like. Like, do you have a parent to give you a Porsche because you're upset? So I'm saying this to say that we're we're in a fight. <laughs> like, black wealth is going to zero at tw in 2053. Anissa, Anissa posted it, and I had I had to go look it up. It's going to zero. But you can see how it was set up, government engineered through the New Deal, the GI Bill, for them to be able to receive education, for them to be able to get home loans and for their homes to appreciate in value so they can take out larger loans to start businesses, to help themselves out, to get out from under the weight of the world, basically. When you don't have access generationally, like I said, I go back to living single. Grammy James comes from sharecropping. Her parents come from sharecropping. So there was no money given. When great Grammy James passed, they ain't had GoFundMe. 
but more than likely somebody that owned great, great, great Grammy James had insurance on them and they got paid and they was able to send their child to school. We're in a fight. And I keep saying that, like when you when you look at history and you look at the, the movements of black people and you look at the abolitionist movement, with the abolitionist movement, they just wanted freedom. You know what I'm saying? You look at the civil rights movement, civil rights movement, they wanted, you know, equality in the workforce, you know, to be able to just get a job. Well, now we have the data that shows that that's not, that's not it. We need to be paid for services rendered. Now we have the data that says, y'all robbed us. <laughs> y'all literally robbed my grandparents and great, 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 great parents, great, great, great grandparents of everything they had. You see stories all the time. Like there was one story that was posted about the man who was a preacher who was killed and he, they told the family that they had th like two days to get off 270 acres of land. When you see in the 1900s that they were lynching mostly black business owners, that was locking us out. The government didn't stop them. Going to the army didn't stop it. If you read When Affirmative Action Was White, it talks about the Southern order and that the army had no place in, in trying to correct the Southern order. And this was in the 1940s. So I'm trying I'm trying to keep these videos under 40 minutes. I hope that you guys learned something from this. I, I took a lot of time doing doing the research. Um, if you want me to do a part two, I do have more about this. Just a little bit. It's, it's not that much. But you can see in the parallel how the government set up one side and they took it from the other side to give. So now it's time for the government to give us hours back like comment share subscribe